Used car lots have literally filled up with junk. Have you seen some of the inventory going on these days? Have you seen what some of the dealers are doing? They're getting in a lower grade of car, they're accepting it. There's problems, there's history. And clearly, even by looking at a lot of these cars, it makes you scratch your head. Five years ago, they wouldn't even consider taking a car like that in on trade. But nowadays, because of the vehicle shortage, they're clearly willing to take just about anything on. Let's take a look around and understand what this whole used car market on the car lots is all about. Life's too short to drive boring cars. I mean, one of the clear problems right now is that car dealers don't even really do much. They take the car in, they barely even give it a wash. And the problem is because the shortage, a lot of customers are just willing to take it willy nilly. And this is a classic example. I mean, it's a Mustang GT. Everybody loves a Mustang, right? Okay, you look around, there's a lot going for it. This is an example of what's happening. I mean, you actually have, look, a good old fashioned manual gearbox. It looks like a nice spec. For the most part, I look around at this thing and you know, the wheels don't look you know, curb rashed or any of that. They look pretty clean and it's a nice color. It's a GT because it obviously comes with the V8. So I can see why a lot of people would buy a car like this. It definitely appeals to the, that type of driver, but then they go, okay, they upgrade the exhaust. Okay, so it's, it's a louder car. It's not stock anymore. And then look at what they've done over here. Right here, they go and put in these fake teeth in here. I don't even know what they're trying to do here. Look at it. I don't even know, it's not even there and complete. And look, there's damage on there, but I bet you they're not even gonna fix this car. It's just gonna go out like that. And yeah, while it's cute, by the previous owner thought it was something special to do, it clearly is probably gonna go to the next owner unless the new owner incoming says, no, I need that change. But a lot of people aren't even going to do that because they're just happy to find a car of similar spec. So it's clearly that a lot of people just will throw down the money in and they, they don't even worry about being underwater on some of their loan payments. So you get cars like that Mustang. A couple more examples of things that they probably won't even fix unless the customer really makes a stink. I mean, right now we're looking at a 2018 Range Rover right here. Absolutely gorgeous vehicle. This is a six figure vehicle, but look, there's some things on here that clearly need some loving. We've got faded letters right there. They probably won't even fade, touch that. And then look over here, all your paint protection film is peeling off. It just looks horrible, but they'll probably leave that alone. Then we have another couple specials over here. Look at this beautiful GLK Mercedes. They probably won't even bother touching that. And I bet you this even is glancing off the curb. I mean, everybody talks about Carfax car proof, but even something like that's probably never made it on the car proof. And then they'll just sell it as is as well. And then again, another Range Rover over here with clearly some banging and banging around the curb. And sadly enough, it's those accidents that might just get a little touch up, never make a Carfax. And you don't know, sometimes there's brackets and fittings and clips and foam back there that get crushed or broken. And even just giving a little spray like some of the corner lots do sometimes, you wind up with a car that actually has a little bit of a clip history to it. You know, other things that are going on right now, look, at, we're looking at this BMW here. And what are we looking at? This is actually a 2012 model year, as you can see right there. 2012, it's an X drive. You know, obviously this one has the 50i. So that means it's got the V8 engine. And you know, the tires are getting down there. Clearly it's not worn out, but they're probably about 60%. You know, we've got a dyna exhaust. Some people are gonna like that. There's some marks and dings and things all over this car. But I think what you're typically finding now, 2012, this car is actually 11 years old, soon to turn the clock at 12 years of age. And you know, there's a time when they wouldn't even consider putting a 10 year old vehicle on the car lot and the used car lot. No, they wouldn't. This car would easily make it to the wholesaler and we would go the route of the auction and let the smaller corner car lots pick those up or, you know, let, you know, let some of the individuals who go to those car lots and those auctions pick them up. But no, now they're starting to sell cars like this at 11, 12 years old and have some significant miles and history behind it that you probably don't want to know if you read the car facts on this. And that's what's starting to happen. They're holding on to these kind of cars, even though, yeah, it's a flashy brand, but these are typically wholesale cars all day long. I mean, when you're talking about 11 or 12 years of age. And the worst part is I can't even really blame the dealers. They're a product of their environment in some cases. They're just trying to get a hold of product. I mean, look at this car, for example. What do we have? A 2005 Acura. And this is a TSX, but look at the body on that. I mean, somebody's gone ahead and you have what looks to be kind of the original paint. It's rotted out right here. That's pretty rough. This doesn't match. 
Of course, somebody's taken a spray bomb and sprayed that all over. You have a little rust happening there. More rust at the back. You know, it's not a pretty car. And then somebody's gone and spray bombed this section forward. And look at the headlights. I don't even know where this car comes from. It's probably got 900,000 miles because, hey, let's face it, it's an Acura, it's a Honda. It probably runs a long time. Why would a car like this even be tagged and on the actual car lot here? Something that looks like that. Or even this, we have this little Chevy and look, damage. And it's probably gonna go out to the next happy customer. And, you know, unfortunately, somebody's gonna put up a stink and they'll push back and they'll say, you know, we'll take you $500 off the car. And then some Joe Blow is gonna drive away with this. I mean, we have things that are hanging off the bottom here too, right there, damage, scratches. I mean, it's not a pretty car in any way, shape or form. And then I think there's more over here. Let's take a look. And then here's another one, clearly another Acura. Somebody thought, well, Acura has a good name, but I mean, not when they're like 25 years old. I mean, what do we have here? This one's banged into a few walls here at some point, washed out headlights. And this is the quality of vehicles that are sometimes making it on these car lots, unfortunately. And I know every car lot has to have their price point cars, but this is kind of getting a little bit ridiculous. Another example right here where you got, you know, smashed hubcaps missing altogether over there. Now, full disclosure, I've just pulled up some car faxes. You'd be surprised how many cars actually have collision history. The other thing is a lot of the dealers aren't fully disclosing. You go to autotrader.ca or .com. What I find is typically the reputable dealers will have an attached car fax available. You click on it, request it, boom, and it'll send it to you. But the dealers that I notice are a little bit on the underside of the belly often say buy Carfax. So they're not paying for it, but dealers all have access. They can pull hundreds of Carfaxes. So if they're not fully disclosing it, chances are there's something to hide. And I found quite a few vehicles like that. Here, let me give you an example of a vehicle that clearly had some history to it, but it's not disclosed. So you look at this beautiful little Toyota right here, right? You think this is a great car. Probably can't get in too many accidents. It's a pretty slow car. But if you look at the paint right here, you'll notice there's a shine. It's a very sh distinctive shine. And even up here, and they have paint protection film here. You can see the line. You could even feel it. And you feel the edge here. And you also feel the edge here. And you feel the paint protection film on this panel. But there's no film on here. I can't feel a lip there. I don't feel a lip on here. And this is the bumper. But if you look at the bumper, it's actually a lot more hazy and it clearly doesn't match up with the body panel over here. So it's a different color. It's actually a different texture altogether. So this here clearly has been repainted while this is, looks more factory. Clearly a bit of an accident history going on there and sad state of affairs, it's well hidden. And that's the other unfortunate part is, you know, I live in the prairies over in the Western side in Canada and we don't have as much population. So what's starting to happen is they're starting to bring in boatloads of vehicles from the East Coast, Toronto, Montreal. I know the same thing goes on the US side of the border. That's what they do there is just because they're low on volume, they have to get cars, bring them in. Well, a lot of times those cars are conditioned to salty weather, the, you know, there's a lot of corrosion underneath. And you can't see that from the outside, but you can see it from the underside. And as well, the Carfax will tell you a bit of a history. You have to get a Carfax or a car proof or both, which tells you accident history, registration locations. Maybe it was used for business applications or rentals. You got to check that stuff out. Clearly, that's not always available unless you really start digging. You can pay for it, but it's going to cost you out of pocket. And so it's not a big secret. I've heard CEOs of some of the big car companies here admit that during that last couple of years when prices were high and parts and cars were scarce that they realized ways to get more profit out of the cars well and a lot of that profit came from increasing the margin adding market adjustment fees but a lot of that same mentality seems to come on the used car market so what they're doing is putting junk on the lot knowing people will buy it because there's not a lot of selection and they don't even have to put money don't have to fix rims, don't have to fix that car paint protection film. A lot of people aren't asking the questions about whether the car's been in an accident or not. And so they're basically just taking it as is, a trade-in. They're not even that sticky if you're trading your own in. And a lot of that becomes because of the fact they know they'll have no problem in selling it on the back end. Now, it's, you know what's funny is you talk to lots of Toyota owners and they own their cars for 10 or 15 or 20 years. Why? Because the cars don't cause them any troubles. They're cheap to maintain and operate. A lot of these used cars that are hitting the car lots are there for a reason. Yeah, sometimes people want to trade up or something newer and later and greater, but a lot of times there's a problem with them. Accident history is one of the big problems and literally after checking car faxes and car proofs, 
I can't tell you how many times. I would say you're probably 20, 30% of the vehicles have some kind of sorted history. And just check out Carfax, it'll speak for itself. So then you're probably wondering what's wrong with buying a good clean used vehicle like this that maybe had a little fender bender, but it was cleaned up and fixed at the best shop. Well, if you talk to the boys over at Car Edge, Zach and the gang, they basically say that, you know, you could expect 15, 20% hit on the value of that vehicle if you buy it again or sell it one more time. But actually I would add to that. I've personally experienced 25 to 30% is actually closer to what it is because I know somebody who actually experienced an accident with their Mercedes C-Class. It took a hit and it wasn't even frame damage or nothing structural, it was all bumpers and lights. They changed it out and the unfortunate part was took it to the dealer to say, hey, what if we do a trade in? The dealer at two different spots actually literally said, one said was about 28% off of what the average was for that car with those kind of miles. And the other one is closer to 30%. So I would actually argue that you probably need almost 30% consideration if you're just gonna take on one of those. And the worst part is dealers are actually charging you, if you're buying that used vehicle, they'll say it's fixed at the best shop in town. But the sad part is it's still hampers the value of the vehicle so anyway i just want to cut to the chase everyone have you ever had experience buying a smashed used car finding out later that it was fixed maybe on you know somebody else's dime or were you somebody pull a fast one on you guess what here at exotic car play place i'm literally about giving you guys the information you need clearly whether it's avoiding bad vehicles buying the good vehicles avoiding mistakes like in the car industry because it could cost you thousands whatever it is you definitely want to hit that subscribe button and as well check that video out because i actually like to share the best cars of 2023 you're definitely going to love that hope to see each and every one of you on the next one we'll see you real soon Bye bye